After a wait of five years, Formula One returns to China following the prolonged restrictions imposed in the country due to the COVID-19 pandemic. For the first time in history, a Chinese driver, Zhou Guanyu, driver for the Stake F1 Kick Sauber team, will compete in his home Grand Prix at the 5.451 km Shanghai International Circuit, located in the Jiading District, northwest of the city. Notably, the stopover in the East Asian country will be the first of the six sprint weekends of the 2024 Formula One racing season. This choice has raised several perplexities, given that five years in the top category of motorsport is almost equivalent to geological eras. Over the last five years, Formula One has revolutionized the technical regulations from an aerodynamic perspective, promoting the return of ground-effect cars that utilize venturi channels to create vertical downforce. Additionally, starting from the 2022 Formula One Championship, the tires have also changed to 18 inches, compared to the 13-inch ones used by the cars in the last Chinese Grand Prix edition which dates back to 2019. Both for the teams and for Pirelli, the fifth round of the championship is considered effectively like a new circuit, as the previous references are practically useless for the upcoming race weekend. Therefore, the simulation work of the teams and the tire supplier itself is even more complex. The various teams have different data at their disposal, including track layouts, altitude changes, and track abrasiveness, which, however, remains uncertain regarding the recent works carried out at the behest of the International Federation. The track designed by Herman Tilke was built on drained marshland, 300 meters below sea level. The structure retains some of its pre-cemented nature, considering that in some areas of the paddock and hospitality areas, they are surrounded by water. The facility has remained practically unused since 2019, and in recent weeks, it has been necessary to carry out leveling works on some segments of the track that had irregular zones. It is highly likely that the first and only free practice session will be very delicate for the drivers. It is reasonable to expect that the track surface will not offer much grip, having only hosted two editions of the Porsche Carrera Cup Asia in 2021 and 2023. The scenario is reminiscent of the weekend in Turkey in the 2020 Formula One season, where the cars seem to be running on ice, with very low asphalt grip. The new sprint race format includes a free practice session on Friday morning, followed by the sprint shootout qualifying in the afternoon, to determine the grid for the 100km mini race, to be held on Saturday morning. While the second qualifying session of the weekend determines the grid for the usual and classic Sunday race, which will be held over a distance of 300 kilometers. Throughout this, the most significant novelty is the new park firm rules and change in terms of restrictions. These changes have mainly been done in order for the Formula One Sprint Weekend to become more linear and understandable for the spectators after feedback collected from fans during the previous championship. In 2023, Formula One had dedicated an entire day to F1 Sprint with qualifying on Saturday morning and the race in the afternoon. In case of problems during the shootout qualifying sessions, teams had very little time to repair the car and participate in the race. From the Chinese Grand Prix onwards, therefore, there will be two types of park firm, one from the shootout to the mini race and another that will start from qualifying to the Sunday race. During the time interval between the two park firm regimes, teams can make changes to the car setup. Obviously, one has to keep in mind that every action must be clearly thought out given that at the start of the following session, we enter a park firm regime again. Another aspect of the sprint weekend is that in the event that the chassis is damaged or has a serious reliability problem, one can now request to replace it between the sprint race and qualifying, even though these sessions are on the same day. However, in order to do this, one has to be ready for it in terms of the team's preparedness and be sure to have the necessary components. The fifth stage of the 2024 Formula One Championship is almost here also for Scuderia Ferrari. In China, the Marinello team will have to face, like everyone else, and for the first time this year, the new format regarding the sprint race. The Italian side last year was able to make good use of the slightly revised format of the double race, managing to set up the car in the best possible way, therefore working well on the simulator and covering some of the shortcomings that the SF23 had compared to its rivals. This season, things are very different, the car is competitive, and if it were to maintain this type of positive attitude in the new sprint format, it could even try to put pressure on Red Bull, partially like what happened at the Albert Park circuit in Australia when the two RB20 cars had various setup issues.
Ferrari's team principal, Frederick Vasseur, continues with his aggressive approach adopted since the beginning of the season, but more than ever before the Australian Grand Prix race weekend. And we all remember how good that weekend turned out for the Italian side, with Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc ahead of everyone, and a Red Bull, which encountered technical difficulties for the first time in a very long time. The work of the Ferrari technicians has been more than positive so far. We have reflected on this aspect in various other videos, but there are still small details that need to be addressed to be truly competitive in every situation and on as many fronts as possible. One of these is well known by now. Tire preparation and qualifying, one of Charles Leclerc's strengths until last year, has now incredibly become his weakness up to this point in 2024. The Monegasque driver hasn't lost speed all of a sudden but evidently, with the SF24, he struggles to find the right tire working window at the right time, and it's something he worked hard on last week, spending three days at the Marinello simulator to solve this specific problem. This season's car is great at managing all tire compounds, especially the harder ones, and perhaps for this reason, it requires a different approach to warm them up and get them up to temperature quickly, without losing performance rapidly. Challenging the Red Bull cars of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez is once again Scuderia Ferrari's main target. There are no doubts about this anymore. The SF24 has shown it can seize every opportunity that comes its way, as the Australian Grand Prix has clearly reiterated, but precisely for this reason, fixing every little detail can make the difference, as team boss Frederic Vasseur has also stated ahead of the Shanghai weekend. The French manager absolutely does not want to leave anything to chance, confirming how the approach has changed in Marinello over the past year, from many points of view. As we pinpointed before, the focal points of the Chinese Grand Prix weekend will essentially be two. Getting the SF24 in good condition right from the start, in the only free practice session available in Shanghai, and improving the effectiveness of Carlos Sainz, but especially of Charles Leclerc in the fast lap on Saturday, which then must also be replicated one day earlier for sprint qualifying, because with this format, points are practically at stake from Friday. It's very difficult to predict how the new cars will work on this track, and how the drivers will deal with the Shanghai circuit. It's a very demanding track with different technical challenges. Prior preparation and the ability to react quickly will be vital. Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz have worked hard with the Marinello team over the past few weeks and now it's time to put their homework to the test. The first sector with the sequence through turns 1, 2 and 3 was extremely challenging with the previous generation of cars, and one can assume it will be even more so with the current ones. It will also be very important to check the condition of the track surface and any dips or bumps, as these are definitely critical when running cars with ground effect. 